Hello, you're watching our series on the Open RAN Vanguard inside the TELUS Open RAN transformation. I'm Guy Daniels, and this special series of programs will give you an exclusive inside view of the Open RAN transformation at TELUS, sharing the telco's vision and its journey as it unfolds. Well, over the past few months, we've been bringing you regular installments, each looking at key aspects of Open RAN and how TELUS is deploying and using this transformational technology. As one of the industry's first major telcos to deploy Open RAN throughout its network, TELUS provides a valuable viewpoint on Open RAN's capabilities. In this program, we are going to look back on the first year of Open RAN deployment and discover what TELUS was able to do differently and reveal the key learnings from the past 12 months. And I'm pleased to say that joining me to explain more is my special guest, Nazim Ben-Hadid, who is the Chief Technology Officer at TELUS. Hello, Nazim. Very good to see you. Thanks so much for taking part in our program. And let's start at the beginning. You know, if we go back a year or more, what did TELUS consider initially would be the primary business benefits of an Open RAN or VRAN strategy? And has this view evolved over time? Hello, Guy, and uh, thanks for having me. So we first started considering ORAN from, from a pure uh, technology evolution perspective. But then we were faced with a strategic choice as we had to swap our network into a new vendor. And when we looked at that, the first consideration for us was to swap to a future-ready network, if I can call that. We didn't want to swap like for like. We wanted to swap for the future. And we looked at you know, the vendor ecosystem, uh, what's available, what's not, what are the roadmaps, as well as the TCO. And ORAN became uh, the logical answer to our uh, question to, to a certain extent. Um, initially, it was, you know, TCO and future proof. As we evolved over time, we found um, other benefits. For example, um, you know, we've, we had already built a virtualized multi-tenant a cloud for our core applications and build on uh, bare metal as a service. And um, we found that we could reuse a lot of the uh, capabilities we put in place in terms of tools and automations and skill set and so on and so forth. So all in all, uh, our experience since we started the, de the deployment has uh, just confirmed uh, that our decision was the right one. Good to hear. And I know a lot of other operators uh, will be pleased to, to hear that as well. Um, you, you mentioned that you were looking initially at a, at a future-proofed strategy. How has TELUS's experience with Open RAN influenced its perspective on the technology's potential you know, to actually meet future 5G requirements? And looking ahead, you know, five, six years as we start to, to uh, implement what will be 6G? So, you know, ORAN open standards, more innovation, more players, better TCO, it's simpler, it's more modular. And, and we believe that, um, you know, in our industry with the services being commoditized and the traffic growing at, uh, you know, an increasing rate, uh, it's the only way. It enables innovation such as AI RAN, you know, R apps, X apps. Um, I can't stress enough how the TCO is better and, as a whole, like some components for us are really important. Open radios are. Uh, we were able to compact our radios by a third, um, uh, roughly, which makes a big difference when you look at uh, civil costs, smaller radios, multiband, more uh, technology innovations in them. Um, you know, all of this, uh, all of these features, we believe are critical for 5G advance and 6G. 6G and uh, you know, ORAN to us, VRAN and ORAN are the foundation for those future technologies. And can I also add, you know, what about what about AI? Because at the moment, there's a lot of talk on AI RAN as part of the the the, the future 
um, transformation path from from 5G to to to, to 6G. Does ORAN help with uh, the integration of, of of AI in the radio access network as well? We believe it does. Uh, with uh, you know standard framework, whether it's SMO or RIC, um, it allows uh, for better integration. And more importantly, it, it allows for common standard ways of, you know, ingesting the data, processing the data, making the decisions and so on and so forth. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks so much, Nazim, for, for clarifying that. And there's a lot of interest on, on TCO and a lot of uh, people really keen to, um, to find out exactly what, what uh, the, the benefits are as we, as we move into the future. But can I also ask about the issue of scaling? Open RAN. What's your outlook for the scalability of Open RAN for large commercial networks? You know, maybe not today, but perhaps in the next three or five years. I, I think scalability is already here. Look, we plan to swap the remaining of our network, so fifty percent of our network, in the next two to three years, and we plan to be one hundred percent Open RAN by uh, uh, twenty twenty nine. When it comes to scale, the way I think about it is as follows: the Traditional telecom compute represents a fraction of a fraction of the compute in the world. Uh, continuing with you know, purpose-built, proprietary uh, uh, hardware and software prevents us from taking advantage of the economies of scales uh, achieved by the IT industry in general. Um, you know, when we first started, we were wondering um, where the barriers would be or where the the choke points would be. We found that uh, choosing the right ecosystem of uh, partners uh, helps with integration, that it's something that uh, you know any or many companies can do. Uh, on our end, we're very open, we're happy to share you know, test results, deployment results, performance results, or, or an, an advocate for um, uh, this ecosystem because we truly believe that uh, it is the way forward. Um, Telecommunication services are a matter of sovereignty for us, for the West, for the Western world, and um, to a certain extent, we're fallen behind in terms of innovation. And we believe that Open RAN will bring back um, innovation um, at the forefront of uh, of telecom. I'm really not worried about the ability to scale. Every component of Open RAN is commoditized to a certain extent. The integration with the right ecosystem of partner is something that you know we have achieved and others have achieved, and uh, yeah, the TCO is better. So it's layers of you know benefits upon benefits upon benefits for our industry. Well, all sounding very positive. Um, and again, you mentioned TCO there and, and and partners and selecting the right partners and working with the right partners has, has been paramount. Now. As we mentioned at the start, it's been a, about a year since TELUS announced Canada's first deployment of Open RAN. Uh, and as we've heard, you've done tremendous work since then. Can you elaborate a bit more on how TELUS is, is leading the industry adoption here and your advice or recommendation to other players in the Open RAN ecosystem? Look, we're, we're, we're not afraid to take risks. We are a big company in Canada, but a, a small company when you compare us to, you know, American or, or European or, or Asian peers. And we compensate for that through innovation and risk taking. But we take, you know, uh, a structured approach to risk. So as we were rolling this out, we had a very structured process with gating and, you know, clear deliverables for each one of the gates as we as we brought um, this service uh, into production. Um, you probably heard from, you know, me or from my team saying that uh, we find that the performance KPIs today with Oran are better or on par or better than, uh, uh, than traditional RAN. Um, we really advocate for the technology. We share each and every one of our learnings, uh, you know, with our industry peers um, as much as we can. And uh, we believe that as an industry, we have to be more opinionated uh, in terms of having uh, consistent and open standards through the ORAN Alliance or, or, or others, uh, through GPP and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, we, we, we believe that uh, 
the substitution cost all in are, are you know, acceptable and that the benefits that we get uh, from the technology adoption are uh, uh, worth, worth the effort. Well, you've really shown what is possible with Open RAN, but we must leave it there for now. Nazim, thank you very much for sharing your views with us today. Now, if you enjoyed this program, then please watch the other videos in the Open RAN Vanguard series. We have several interviews, deep dives and panel discussions with more still to come. And to make sure you don't miss the release of these videos, please register your interest and sign up at our website. And this is also where you'll find further information, including links to all related content. We will be back later this month with our final panel discussion, where we will wrap up the whole Vanguard series. For now, though, thank you for watching this latest program on the TELUS Open RAN transformation. And until next time, goodbye.